Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to fix this paper weight. It has been almost three months since the last time I have used this printer. And we are going to use this K1 booster kit, or they call it the three-piece Vanguard set. And these contain everything that we need to fix this printer. So I'm going to take you with me on how to replace all these parts and look if they really fixed the under extrusion issues. So first let's look what's in the box. We have some filament. So this was a 299 ordeal. So this is the fast melting hyper PLA white filament. So this is the three piece Vanguard set. These contain all the updated products that we will need for the broken system that we got. First of all, we are greeted with the AI camera. For what I have seen, this camera isn't great. It's useful. Let's keep it with that. Then we have the new updated hot end. As you can see, the temperature probe is now not anymore on the inside. It is now on the outside. And we have the a complementing red sock. And then the last thing, this is the biggest problem of them all, and that is going to be the extruder. So the this is the new one. This is not a polished handle anymore. This is come some kind of a flat sandblasted one with the white little plunger. We also have an isolator for the motor, so this is going to keep the heat away from the gears on the inside. One big problem in the K1 is that there was definitely some heat creep, so this is probably, hopefully, going to fix some of this. So as you can see, this is already an upgraded system. We already have replaced the chain link, so this rides smoothly into the speed bump. You can find these files right over there. You can download them and try them for yourself. Now, that's not the point of this video. We are going to remove the upper ring. Then we are going to remove this protective cover. This is just a fancy fan grill by the looks of it. Maybe it's better just to leave it off. I don't see the point of keeping it on. It acts as an insulator. And as this has heat creep, we want all the airflow that we can get. From what I can see, there is a screw right over here, right over here. This is to remove the front cover and the extruder is holding with two bolts on the side. And now we should re be able to remove this with a bit of force. The only thing you need to be careful of is this fan header right over here. It seems to be glued in. Then you're better off taking some pliers because you do not want to pull on the cable. And just like that, we have removed the front shell. So if you want to remove the original chain link, this is the way to do it. Now you remove these two bolts, you pull out the plug, you move it through the chain and you replace it with this one. And then we have one more bolt on the other side. And there we have it. We have the motor and the extruder in our hands. Next, what you want to do is remove these two bolts because this is keeping the extruder on the motor. So next up, what you want to do is take your little spacer like this, install it like this, like a nice little sandwich and screw it back in. I'm using the bolts that were delivered by the kit. And so should you because the ones in the kit are slightly longer, probably to compensate for the little insulator we put right in here. So the new extruder is on the motor. Putting it back in is just as easy. We're just going to slide back in the extruder like this. Then you take your three bolts and I'm going to start on the right side. Just put them in temporarily so we can align all the bolts. If you tighten the first one directly it's going to give you a bad time. So everything is back in, nicely mounted. I have opened up the old extruder and you can see a lot of the red gunk in it. I have printed some red ABS in it and it gave me a really bad time. So you can see the residue on the inside and you can see the residue right on the gears. Now one thing, and this was probably the most common problem that we saw with the old extruder is that one of the wheels and also with mine it's the same this one is bent outwards now removing the hot end is going to be a bit trickier we have some connections right over here but they are glued so i decided to remove the uh, pcb so we can get a closer look at the connections so we are safer to work on this machine there are a few bolts in there i'm going to start with this one we are going to remove this cover which is spring-loaded, funny enough. Not sure why, 
This is the third and final one that we want to remove. Now you can pull back this housing. As you can see, they have glued up mine super badly. So I will have to try and heat it up a little bit. So I'm going to do that right now. There is a little screw right in the heat sink over here. This is the place where the hot end is fixed to the heat sink. So we are going to release that one. We loosened this grub screw and the heat sink. This is going to hold in your Hot dance, now going to remove these ones. Now we can compare the two hot ends, and as you can see, this is a bimetal one, this isn't. So we have already an upgraded uh, bimetal hot end. And the other thing is that the thermistor isn't no longer integrated into the hot end, it is integrated into the structure. So yeah, we are going to see if this is going to fix any problems. So far the hot end was doing okay. I think the cooling could be better, but yeah, I think we could manage the printing results. One thing I noticed on this one, we had some thermal paste on the heat break and we are going to do the same on this one. So we get a good, nice thermal transfer between this and the heat sink right over here. And also one thing I noticed is they absolutely butchered this canvas cable. The insulation is gone. They squished it so hard that we have a damaged cable. So I'm going to ask them for a replacement. As you can see, there are some huge notches in these cables. So these are probably going to break with time and heating cycles. For thermal paste, we are going to use some thermal grizzly. This is for CPU coolers, but I have successfully used this on my Sidewinder X1 for the same problem. So we are going to do just the same on this one. We just want to apply some and then rub it all over. So we get a nice good contact with the aluminum frame that's inside. I have applied some of it on this hot end. Now it's time to put it back in. Now for the orientation, I'm going to use this hole as a reference and we want this hole facing towards the front of the printer. So you want to insert it until it stops out of itself and then give it some good wiggles so that the thermal paste is nice and spready. Then we have to take our two long bolts and these have to go bin back into the according place. This doesn't have to be super tight. These are very small threads just until you feel some back pressure and that's good enough. Then we are going to heat cycle it and when it's hot we are going to do the same and just snug it a little bit up and that's going to be it. Now let's not forget we have that little grub screw on the other side of the heat sink. That's what, what we are going to do next. All right now we have done this. We are going to want to plug in all the connectors back again. So before we close it up, I'm going to insert some bolts to hold in the fan and let's screw everything back in. Before we tighten everything, let's just check if we don't have any weird positioning. Now the last thing that we have to do is mount this bracket back up in here so the canvas is secured. Mine got smashed, so I'm going to ask for a replacement and then we have to place in this extruder, just plug in this wire, clip it in and then with two bolts on this side and one on this side, we should be able to finish this project and do some calibrations. So as you can see, we are extruding new filament. We have installed everything. Now it's time to finish everything up, installing the front cover and do a real test print. One thing I want to mention, this thing has scared the bejesus out of me. It started smoking on me at first startup and it was really scary. I think it was just some machining oils or something like that because it stopped smoking right now and we have no error. So I think we're good. We have wiped the last disappointment from the bed. Now it's time to test it. So while the K1 is calibrating itself, I did some investigation. So why is this gear getting crooked? The answer is right over here. I hope you can see it. You can see that these posts are not straight so one of these is crooked I think no it's this one so this one is crooked the material is way too soft and just the sheer pressure of the filament 
pushed this gear to a crooked angle. That's why we see another material now on the new extruder. So let's hope that this problem isn't coming back anytime soon. And now for the heat break, this is not a bimetal heat break that they used. It is not the same size as a Volcano because I have one for my Sidewinder X1. And the Volcano is ever so slightly a bit longer. Because this part is a bit longer, the nozzle is going to sit a bit lower in the machine. So you will have to calibrate it if you do this because it's going to be about a one millimeter and a half of height difference. So you could just swap it out with the heat break of a Volcano. So it looks like we've fixed the under extrusion and we have changed it or swapped it for over extrusion and this is because I did some slicer settings to still be able to print something but because the problem kept getting worse and worse it stopped extruding eventually with now the result is that we are over extruding severely which is not a problem we just have to change the slicer settings and do some slicer calibrations this is fixed now it's time to install the free let's call it free upgrade and it is going to be the camera so this little notch has to meet up here in the corner something like this and then you will have to turn in this little screw and take this ribbon cable and put it into the camera and connect it to your slicer. So that's what I'm going to do next. So we installed Creality Print and we get a nice feed of the camera live. And I have to say that the quality of the feed is a lot better than I thought. Yeah, it's not that bad. The only thing that I noticed is that this this here is the fan and the fan is just blocking the side a little bit but i don't think this is a major problem this is just going to be a bit annoying so the camera is installed now let's try and do some calibration so those were the upgraded parts for the creality k1 we have a new hot end and we have a new extruder now it's time to test it and work again on my review because the review yeah i had about five really good prints and after that it was going downhill really fast and you can even see it I guess, yeah, you can even see it right here that it started under extruding. Yeah, it's... If you have the old printer with the shiny knob and the shiny knob, it's really evident. It's, it's looking like a piece of chrome. If you have this one, ask for a new one. It's trash. It's really bad. You have to change it because you will have extruder issues after a while. So that's gonna be it i'm glad that i finally can continue my testing and guys i see you in the next one